Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hot Rod Dad channel. Glad you came, hope you stay. Like, subscribe, comment, share, etc., etc. I have been in the garage this weekend cleaning up and I rolled the BLT out here to get a little sunshine and thought I'd shoot you a little video here to prove to you I have been working on it a little bit it's largely been uh, kind of mothballed and, and neglected here. But I thought I'd shoot you a little walk around video here and tell you a little bit about some of the parts that I've used and a little bit about my philosophy for building hot rods. So y'all check it out right here. Um, first started this project many years ago. And the reason I call it the BLT is because that stands for the bucket list T. Started out with that cowl right there. Picked up, uh, actually found it on a forum online, the Model T Ford Club of America. And went to the guy's house to pick up this cowl and he had it listed for $75. You see right there, 1926 T. Still got the writing on it where uh, he'd been taking some of this stuff to swamp me. So uh, this was in Virginia and uh, is in the heels and sticks. I went to pick up that cowl and when I got there, it was just a young boy and he had uh, bought out a, with the help of a financial backer right there, he had bought out an old uh, Ford dealership and they had a ton of NOS Ford parts. Now, obviously, this cowl wasn't uh, NOS, but he had there, and I wish I had some video of it um, at the time. You know, it's been 20 years ago or more. Uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, everybody didn't carry a, a cell phone in their pocket, but he had a 1927 Ford touring car body, new old stock. It was still in the shipping crate from Ford. So how cool is that? Anyway, picked up that cowl and uh, some other parts. He had it listed for 75 bucks and this was the last of the parts that he had. So I picked that cowl up and some other parts ended up paying him uh, what he had it listed for there, which was $75 and he threw in a whole truckload of other parts because he was just, uh, like I said, getting to the end of uh, liquidating all that stuff and i sold so much of that stuff that uh i kind of you know helped finance the rest of the tub right there and uh so this is a very low buck approach to hot rodding um you know some people would call it a rat rod because it's not really um you know it's not i'm not really gonna finish it as far as paint and stuff goes um i would uh lean more to toward uh, calling it a traditional hot rod uh, he minus the engine, maybe, you know, that's a, a, a 1962 to 1970, uh, Chevy two Nova, uh, 153. That's a little four banger behind it is an air cool two speed power glide right there. And, uh, I made the frame myself, uh, the, uh, springs on the front. 53 to 56 Ford F100 front springs that I cut down. Did a video on uh, how I built those uh, quarter elliptics. Um, Model A front wishbone split, 41 Ford front axle, um, 2829 uh, Model A grill shell, aftermarket uh, aluminum radiator that I picked up off eBay. I actually have changed that since I did the first walk around of this car. Uh, changed that to a 32 Ford chopped um, radiator for a chopped grill shell. And that lowered it down just about an inch. And that really helped with the slope of the hood right there. Because I am uh, intending to run a full hood on this car. I have since uh, finished welding up the header right there. And I did a video on building that. <laughs> How you like my air cleaner? <laughs> that is the original base for the uh, um, 
this this uh, intake came off of a Mercruiser boat. So that's the original um, base for the flame arrester that was on the boat. Picked up an air cleaner at the parts store, and that's an old pot lid <laughs> out of uh, some pots and pans that uh, the wife was throwing out. Yeah, but I think it kind of kind of cool. Kind of looks like an old Stellings air cleaner. Got that got that flattened uh, pancake look to it. Um, so what else can I tell you about it? Custom built the frame. That's inch and a half by three rectangular tubing. I uh, kicked up back here in the back and this, these are uh, original Model A frame rails. Uh, the rear end is an eight inch Ford out of a Maverick and it works out perfect width right there. Um, the springs are uh, model T or T bucket springs, uh, traditional T bucket springs that you would use on the front, but I'm I'm using them on the rear back here. Took one spring off to soften the, soften them up a little bit. I'm going to have a little bit of a truck bed back here on the back. I'm uh, tossing around the idea of a 10 inch round gas tank right there. I've got that mocked up, and I think I'm going to sink it down into the bed just a little bit. I've been working on the steering, uh, the columns out of a 46 Chevy pickup. Um, it's going to have a quick release, I think, on, on that. Uh, and it will get uh, this Model T steering wheel, I think. I'm going to adapt that to work with that quick change. And I'll refinish that wooden uh, hoop on it. But, uh, you know, you've seen this car a lot on the channel and um, i've done several videos of it but this video is not necessarily about the the uh, blt here it's more more or less about kind of uh, my philosophy for for building hot rods as you can tell this is a low buck approach to building a hot rod and i'm more of a um, i'm more of a slow cooker than a microwave <laughs> i'm more of a crock pot i guess i guess you'd say uh, when it comes to building stuff but that's because uh, in my opinion you can uh, kind of divide the pie up three different ways when you're building a hot rod or any other kind of project that you can think of you can throw your time talent or money at it so if you got a lot of money you know you don't have to have a lot of time or talent you can hire somebody to build you a car um, but uh, you know, when I first started out building stuff, building cars and trucks, hot rods, it was more of a challenge to me and more out of necessity uh, that I didn't spend a whole lot of money on uh, building what I wanted because, uh, you know, I married my high school sweetheart at 18 years old. We're going on 35 years of marriage. I tell folks all the time that uh, we started out with nothing and we still have most of it left. <laughs> but I do have uh, I am I'm in more of a, a position now where I can spend more money on toys and I could I could honestly hire somebody to build me a hot rod but that's not where the funds at to me it's about building something cool with your own hands and being creative and you have to get creative when you're working in a budget I'm hoping not to spend more than five thousand dollars on this car and honestly what you see here right now i've only spent a couple thousand dollars on but that's been over several years you have to take your time look for the right parts and uh kind of um you know wait for the the, the right deals to come along so when you find them you have to have a little money bankroll so that you can throw a little money at it here and there but uh, like i said about five thousand dollars on this car um, and over here I'll show you Oscar I built this truck y'all seen it on the channel several times I'm sure um, I set a budget of five thousand dollars to build this truck mostly because um, you know I run into people all the time and, and young guys particularly that say you know you just can't build anything cool uh, it's expensive, uh, you know, uh, it, it takes up so much time, blah, blah, blah. So um, I set out to build this truck and did it on a $5,000 budget to prove a point that you can build something 
you know, kind of, kind of cool. Uh, I told them up front, you know, it's not going to be a show truck, but it's going to be a gnarly old pickup that I can haul stuff with and, you know, just have fun beating around in. Nothing fancy about it. It's just, uh, it's just a 54 Chevy truck body. I put it on an S10 chassis. It's got a, a, uh, 350, 350 turbo transmission in it. Like I said, nothing fancy, but I had it on the road for $4,200. So, uh, like I said, I set out to build uh, that truck and prove a point, and I think I did. Uh, you know, the guys, when I finally drove it to work and started driving it around town, everybody that I had talked to about it in the past, you know, they really uh, dig it now. So, um, to me, it's more about building cool stuff with your own hands and, um, you know, uh, using your imagination. So, also, every piece of this car, I can tell a story about. I've already told you a story about the cow, you know, uh, when, when I went to Virginia to pick that up. Picked the engine up from an old dude that uh, was into flat fender Jeeps. And I picked up a um, several of those engines. Uh, it was just uh, their basket cases, and uh, you know there was enough machine work there done on those all tore down that I could build a couple of good engines out of them, and I only paid 250 bucks for the whole lot. Sold some parts off, and if it, you know that didn't uh, leave me with much at all invested in in what I had there, so. Um, Every piece of this car, I can I can pretty much tell you a story about some of the steel that I've used in it as uh, cross members and stuff. Um, came from a horse ranch that I was wiring as an electrician, and uh, the cool story about that is uh, this was a very very wealthy family, and they had hired this crew from Texas to come and build a fence all around the property and they built it out of steel so they were there for months building this steel fence and when they got done they uh, left it in a pile right there what they had left over and they said help yourself get whatever you want out of that well the the cool story about that is as we was building uh, doing the electrical on this uh, horse ranch we were there one day uh, working on the lighting and the riding arena. They had an indoor riding arena. This is how wealthy this client was. Anyway, um, it had been coming a monsoon for about two weeks. It was just pouring the rain every day. So the owner showed up uh, one day out of the blue. The, the rain had, had uh, quit and they showed up to kind of inspect the the property and, and the progress of the project and everything. They showed up in a really fancy black Escalade with a total white leather interior in it. <laughs> so when the owner got there, he swiveled around in the seat and he put on his little booties, little plastic booties over his uh, shoes so as not to get the interior muddy. Little did he know when they pulled up there to the edge of the driveway, that there was a ditch that they had buried a water line there and it had been covered back but the ground was just super soft so when he bailed out of that escalade he went knee deep into the mud <laughs> and we couldn't help but uh, horse laugh him and uh, he jumped back up in the es escalade right there and they just peeled out and I'm sure they got mud all in the interior of that that car but uh you know every time i drive this uh little car here when i get it finished i'll probably think about that old dude a little bit and you know uh probably chuckle to myself some but uh anyway like i said every piece of this car has a story and to me that's what it's all about so hope uh you found this uh video you know uh entertaining and, um, you know, if, uh, if you did, give it a big thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And y'all get out there and build something with your own two hands and enjoy it. 
and uh, when you get done, you know, you'll have a story to tell just like I do. So see y'all next time. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. And I already said it. Y'all get out there and build something.